Hello everyone, I'm going, this presentation today is just introducing you to the concept of medicine's reconciliation. Uh, and the general idea is that you uh, listen and watch this presentation before the lecture on Friday of your first week on Return to Kiel. It just aims to introduce you to the concept and just explain why medicine's reconciliation will be something that you probably do every day in your pharmacy career, whether you go into hospital pharmacy or community pharmacy. So what is medicine's reconciliation? Well, definition of reconciliation, uh, the action of making one view or belief compatible with another. We often talk about it in peace talk. So for instance, there is the Northern Ireland peace process. A lot of talk about reconciliation there. Medicine's reconciliation, however, is the act of obtaining an accurate drug history in order to establish a baseline for future treatment. That's my own definition, uh, and I think that works a lot better than some of the others that you get on the internet. Basically, what we want to know is what tablet is a patient on, what medications are they actually taking at that moment before we decide to treat them further. It may be none, it may be anything up to 25 medications and be a very complex process. So we're just going to introduce you to why it's important, why we do it, and how to do it. Okay, so we talk about interfaces a lot when we talk about medicine's reconciliation. And by an interface, it's where the care of a patient transfers from one practitioner to another, or from one location to another. So it may be when a patient's admitted to hospital, maybe when they're discharged from hospital back to the community. It may be when a referral's made between practitioners in the hospital, okay? And often, when this happens, problems can occur. We've got some statistics about that, okay? This is from the IHI, slightly old now, nearly 10 years ago, uh, but the problem hasn't changed really, okay? And there you go, you can see for yourselves, poor communication of information at transition points in care is responsible for as many as 50% of all medication errors and 20% of adverse drug events in hospital are related to either poor medicines reconciliation, okay, so that's not knowing what medicines a patient takes, or actually thinking incorrectly and actually thinking that patient takes medication when they're not taking it any longer. Okay, so going in and delving a little deeper, Medicines reconciliation, as you can see, a process of obtaining an up-to-date and accurate medication list that's been compared to the most recently available information. And the most important part here is the documentation. As a pharmacist in hospital, one of the first jobs you're expected to do when you see a new patient is to document the medication they were taking prior to admission. Okay, you do that by a number of sources that we'll go into later. A complete medical reconciliation will actually look at any discrepancies, okay? So maybe a patient's brought a list of medication, but there's something uh, that doesn't marry up with what you think they're taking. Any changes, okay? So if a patient comes into hospital with a pulse of, say, 42, and they're taking a 10 or 50 milligrams at home, a beta blocker, you'd like to think that the doctors would stop that, okay, and that's important. Any deletions, okay, so any medications that are actually missing from a list. That often happens with things like inhalers, creams are often missed off because uh, when a patient's first clerked into hospital, they may ask, what tablets do you take? And patients won't extend that link to things like inhalers and creams. Okay, and any additions, so anything that's there that maybe shouldn't be there or not. And we'll look at a few examples of those in a bit, okay? And basically that last sentence at the bottom of the slide is what we're aiming for. We're aiming for a complete list of medications that a patient should be taking accurately communicated, okay? And that's important. Often when a patient's clerked into hospital, you have a list of tablets, it'll go atenolol, aspirin, simvastatin, and lodipine. Okay, there's no doses there, there's no frequencies of drugs, and as a pharmacist it's really important that we accurately, accurately record what the patient was on prior to admission. Okay, and this is what we're aiming for. Basically, we want to ensure that patients receive all intended medications and no unintended medications following a transition in care location. The 
these are a few of the problems that could occur if a patient, um, you know, if a medicine's reconciliation isn't appropriately carried out. So patients could receive the wrong medication, the wrong dose, they may have medicines omitted, there may be confusion or a lack of confidence, uh, or even the worst thing could be harm from potential medication errors. So if you give a patient the wrong tablet, say you give them again, I'll use the example of atenolol because it's the first thing that comes into my head, and they uh, have asthma, okay, you're possibly going to precipitate an asthmatic attack, go into bronchospasm. Okay, so that's the last thing we want. As pharmacists, we always have to bear in mind that we first want to do no harm to a patient. Okay, for professionals, it can cause misinformation, a delay to treatment or confusion. If you don't know what medication a patient is on, it's very difficult to make a clinical assessment of their condition. Okay, you only make a partial assessment and because you've got a lack of information there, you may not choose the best treatment course for your patient. So we always have to bear that in mind as well. And also you've got to think about the wider scope is the organisation. So these could be, you know, a community pharmacy chain, it could be a hospital trust, the primary care trust. We actually, you know, there's a lot of standards come out recently. Uh, there was an NPA alert uh, a few years ago. There's also RPSGB standards for hospital admission. And we actually talk about, you know, clinical governance issues in that case. You know, trusts are actually measured against how quickly a patient, uh, their medicines are reconciled. So ideally we're looking for within 24 to 48 hours of an admission to hospital. If it's not reconciled appropriately, again, looking at the patient harm, there could be an extended length of days in hospital. Okay, it says extended length of stays there, but you know, normally it would be in days or weeks that we'd measure this. Um, again, if we don't know what medicines a patient is on, we can't treat them as appropriately as we can, and we could, you know, give a drug that's contraindicated, uh, especially in the case of drugs with long half-lives. So if we have a patient who's on amiodarone but only stopped taking it a week ago, actually that will still have a clinical effect on the patient for at least two months. So we need to bear that in mind. Okay, It can result in delays to discharge from hospital and also a loss of confidence amongst commissioners in the community. Uh, if we can't do our jobs appropriately then actually it's less likely for the jobs to become commissioned patients are going to be less have less confidence in the system itself so this is a real way we can make a difference as pharmacists to patient care okay so we actually thought it may be better for us to give you some clinical examples it's all very well talking about a process but until you've got a concrete example in front of you it's very difficult to you know process the information and to understand what we're talking about. So this is a case you know from my past. Patient admitted to hospital with pulmonary edema, fluid on the lungs, no available drug history. Okay, so the first thing, you know, admitted late at night, let's say two in the morning, first thing uh, the F1 does, the doctor that comes along to treat the doc, the patient, says, we'll give them some frusamide, uh, diuretic, 40 milligrams a day, that should drain some fluid off the lungs. Okay. Only 48 hours later the drug history is completed and we actually find out that the patient took through some amount of 80 milligrams a day at home prior to admission. So what had happened in the last two days is rather than actually benefiting the patient we've harmed them. We've actually halved their dose of diuretic and because of that we've exacerbated uh, the amount of edema, the amount of fluid collecting on the lungs. So because of that, the patient's breathlessness deteriorated and the patient was quite unwell because of that. So it's vitally important in that case that we actually, um, you know, reconcile medicines as soon as possible. That's, it can really benefit patient care and prevent harm, which is the main thing we want to do. Looking the other way around, okay, we also reconcile medicines as a community pharmacist in the past. Um, often, you know, patients are admitted to hospital, they're on a regular prescription in the community pharmacy. What happens is they're admitted, changing medication there. But actually, you know, very often GP repeat prescriptions are still issued under the old medicine. So this is an example here. 
you know, if your patient with dementia, you normally deliver to them, maybe dispense a blister plaque, a compliance aid to them. Okay, and you've got a new prescription for fentanyl, 25 microgram patches every 72 hours. Okay, if the GP doesn't update the record or they've already sent the prescription to the pharmacy, what can actually happen is the old prescription is delivered on the discharge to the patient. The fentanyl doesn't get followed up or it only goes through to the GP surgery a week later. Because of that, the patient goes without analgesia. Because the patient has dementia, they struggle to communicate that and that could easily result in a readmission to hospital, either to a mental health unit or to an acute unit. Because the patient you know, may not be able to communicate how their pain is and may result in aggressive behaviour or anything of that nature. So it's really important as well, uh, very often if you have a patient who you deliver blister packs for, hospitals will now fax discharge prescriptions. So we can actually marry up what's on this discharge prescription against the prescriptions that we already have from the GP that can actually be dispensed in the community. Vitally important that we do this. Okay, looking into it a bit deeper, there's two basic levels of medicines reconciliation. Okay, there's the basic reconciliation and that's an accurate drug history taking. And I say that loosely at a technician level, it's what you'd at least expect of a technician to do. And that's basically, you know, recording every medicine that a patient was on prior to the transfer of their care. And it's recording it accurately and appropriately. So it's say aspirin 75 milligrams once a day, omeprazole 20 milligram capsules once a day, simvastatin 40 milligram tablets once at night. Okay. For full reconciliation, what you actually do is you resolve the discrepancies and accurately record any decisions that you made. And you do that as a pharmacist using your full clinical knowledge. Okay, so say the patient before they were on aspirin, omeprazole and simvastatin was admitted to a hospital ward with Clostridium difficile bacteria. If they have no other you know, conditions apart from a bit of higher cholesterol and a primary care risk, uh, for cardiac disease, you'd actually want to stop that omeprazole. The last thing you want to do is recommend it because that could lengthen the duration of the Clostridium difficile infection okay, and actually endanger the patient. Again, if another example, if a patient's admitted to hospital with low blood pressure, they're on a raft of antihypertensives, so atenolol, amlodipine, and ramipril, Again, you'd want a discussion with a clinician looking after the patient before you recommended those drugs to be restarted. So the technician level is the basic drug history taking. The pharmacist level is taking all your clinical knowledge and saying, well, this patient should continue on this medication. Maybe this medication should be stopped at this time. Okay, so there's three C's that the MPC come up with. So collecting information. That can be from a number of sources, we'll look at those in a bit. Checking the information to make sure that it's appropriate and checking different sources of information against each other. And the final most important one is communicating that information. And the best way to do that is by a written order. So either that may be on the PMR system in the community pharmacy, in the medical notes in a hospital. Vitally important that everyone who's going to look after that patient, every practitioner, has access to an accurate drug history. Okay, these are what are known as the minimum data sets. So these are what we're looking for when we reconcile medicines for a patient. So going from secondary to primary care or hospital to the community setting, you want the complete patient details, so that's date of birth, address, um, full name, diagnosis of presenting condition and comorbidities, list of all the medicines prescribed on discharge, dose, frequency and route. Okay, I don't need to read all these out for you. And again, going from primary to secondary care is the same thing again. So we want a list of all the medicines prescribed. Don't forget to you know, list over-the-counter medicines, any herbal medication that a patient may know. And always vitally important is you know, communicating known allergies as well. That's massively important. Okay, so what skills do you need? How do you actually do that? 
So you need to be able to communicate to people, okay? And by effective communication skills, you need to be able to communicate to various different professionals, the patient themselves, in a language that they understand. So you need to use appropriate language for a, the language you use for a patient may be different to the language you use for a consultant surgeon, for instance. Um, it's an obvious example, but you know sometimes people won't call their inhalers inhalers; they call them puffers. Um, it's up to you to decide what is the appropriate language to use in that situation. You need a technical knowledge of medicines management processes. So how do you manage? medicines in your pharmacy, how do you manage them in the hospital, where's the patient going to get the medicines from, and a knowledge of basic therapeutics as well. So knowing what tablets do, what the risks are associated, the contraindications, the side effects, okay, and also um, any cautions that may be appropriate in the case of the patient. Okay, so how do you perform it? Well, I always say to students, pharmacists, got to think of it like a detective sometimes. You've got to uh, look at various sources of information and then corroborate them, decide how useful they are as evidence. So we've got a few examples there. So often you may have the patient, often they're not the best source because they can remember what tablets they're on but they might not remember the dose. The actual medicines themselves, so if a patient has a bag of medicines with them, you'd be able to reconcile that and see what what dose they're on every day and actually you can have a look at the date they were dispensed that's vitally important as well because the date shows you how frequently it was I'm sure you've all come across scenarios before where you've had patients who've been stockpiling medicines and they bring it back to the community pharmacy and you've got medicines from say 2007 on there that the patient took four of them and couldn't they pay it, and it didn't agree with the patient so they've never actually taken them but they're still there. So you have to be careful of things like this. You can also have prescription, repeat prescription charts, and other professional records. You may have doctor's notes, notes from other healthcare professionals, nurse practitioners, physiotherapists. They may all have something to say about the medicines that a patient takes. Okay, but you've got to think about, I've mentioned it briefly before, the availability and the validity of resources. If you're working on a Sunday, Often you can't ring a patient's GP at all. Okay, if you're chatting to a patient, you know it may be a drug addict. It may be someone who's had a history of abuse of prescription drugs, and that's what I mean by seeking behaviour. They may, you know, I've had people who tell me they're on all sorts of diazepam, temazepam, flunitrazepam, and basically what they're trying to do is actually elicit some medication from the hospital that isn't appropriate for their condition. Okay, the little picture on the left of the little old lady may be a very useful source of information, but also could be the classical pleasantly confused lady who kind of doesn't really know where she is and really doesn't know what tablet she's taking at the moment. And again, the patient on the right, you know, involved in a road traffic accident there, you're not really going to get much information from him, so you're going to have to look at other sources, and that could be family, could be friends, carers relatives or a prescription list. Okay, there's a lot of barriers to medicines reconciliation. Sometimes that's systems, skills, people, organisational issues and the resources. So you may be time pressured. There may not be enough people who are appropriately trained within your organisation. The system inherently may stop people carrying out medicines reconciliation appropriately. So it's really important as a pharmacist to think about these barriers and think about how they may be improved. Okay, if you want any more information, you can ask any of the pharmacists or pharmacy technicians who work and teach here. So that's any of the clinical team, the practice team. We're all pharmacists and we'll all know about medicines reconciliation. And there's a couple of web links there as well. Um, and they're all about, there's a little case of medicines reconciliation and a little quiz about your knowledge of how to do it and how appropriate it is to do that. Um, what I really want you to do as a take home message is listen to this prior to your workshop and in the workshop what we're going to do for you is give you some practical examples. So we've taken some pictures of tablets 
and actually written a few cases that would be very similar to those that are in hospital or in the community where we're actually thinking about, well, what tablet should the patient be on and think about all the issues. The reason we're doing this is there's a little bit of an OSCE station towards the end of the year, I'm sure you'll all be pleased to know, and that will involve medicines reconciliation. It will only be, you know, the usual eight minute station. So because of that, we can't, you know, I don't think it will involve all the clinical knowledge that you need, but it's vitally important that you know those skills already. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Thank you for listening. And I will see you on Friday, the 3rd of October. Thank you very much.